Jack Barnum will do the kicking duties today for Central Connecticut State, and we are underway. And this one will be taken at the three-yard line by the Golden Flashes. And they get to the return man at about the 24-yard line. Brought back by Krishan McCray, who we'll see a lot of today at his wide receiver position. That's right, Krishan McCray, one of the targets that Kent State quarterback, Alima loves to target. And as we said in the opening, they're trying to get to that red zone, end zone area today, not just making progress and productivity in the open field. So first and 10, they will start this drive at the 24-yard line. An immediate strike for big yardage for the Golden Flashes. He hits Luke Floria on the first pass of the ball game. He's finally run out of bounds by Tavian Montgomery of Central Connecticut State. What a start. Certainly. Throughout all the way into Blue Devil territory. And what you would notice is that Kent State still has that up-tempo offense, David, that they like to run. That was a 28-yard pickup. And we'll get the first carry of the day by their featured tailback on the Kent State side, Gavin Garcia. He is a sophomore out of Catawissa, Pennsylvania. Yeah, one of the few holdovers from the previous regime that decided to stick around on campus. Quick hit on the flat outside the numbers on the left to Floria. His second catch of the day. That is uh, going to leave him at third down and about two. Again, Montgomery on the stop. So we've had two receptions by Floria and a nice seven-yard run by Garcia. At the 35 now, Alimo to Garcia, hits the pile. The Golden Flashes offensive line, a little bit of a work in progress, Gerard. And early on in the season, and when you have inexperienced players trying to find that rapport, it takes time. It doesn't happen overnight. But so far, you have to be encouraged if you're Coach Burns by what you've seen from your offense in that they are moving the football in a positive direction. Well, already decision time for Kenny Burns. Garcia's run came up about a half a yard short. Ball's on the 34-yard line. Alimo to Garcia. He got it that time. And it's a first and 10 for the Golden Flashes. The tackle made by Harold Miles III, the middle linebacker for the Blue Devils, who are 1-1. One and one. We'll see the first down run right here. And you see the surge by the guys in the blue jerseys as opposed to the white. It helps pick up those positive yards. But if you're Central Connecticut, what you're saying is make them earn it. You're just not going to give it to them by letting them just push you around the football field today. Whistles blow. I think there's maybe a timeout, or was it for an injured player? There was a defensive injury. Billy Williams is our referee. You see him there in the white hat. He's heading up a crew of Mark Shield, the headline judge, Nick Brigatti. The line judge, Paul Stout, back judge. Our umpire today is Tony Day. Ken Cloud is the side judge. Kendall Smith, the field judge. Tony Romano, the center judge on this crew, making the impartial calls in this non-conference battle. On the ground is Xavier Williams, his first carry of the day. The Blue Devils come in waves, and they tackle the senior for a loss. Harold Miles making his way to the pile along with Trinidad Gonzalez. And that's a big defensive play for the Blue Devils, Gerard. Penetration is the key. And when you're getting penetration on the defensive front, it allows you to do what? Put a running back for a tackle for a loss. Great job on the part of the Kent. Second down and 14. Man wide open, caught at the 24-yard line. A nice connection to Trell Harris, the sophomore out of LaGrange, Illinois. Four catches, 78 yards last week, nine grabs on the season now. And Trell's definitely making himself available for passes and nice fake on the part of Alimo right there, fooling the cameraman as well as the defenders for Central Connecticut. Alimo took off running around the left side, got a great seal block from Dustin Morrell, the left guard. And you see a lot of green space in front of him right there, Gerard. <laughs> yes, you do. And you have to do a better job if you're 
Come on, Clark, of maintaining your leverage and not allowing the quarterback to get outside. First and 10 from the 12-yard line. The Golden Flash is looking for their first TD of the season. It's Garcia, breaks away from the pile, got inside the five-yard line, and is tackled at about the four, maybe the three-and-a-half-yard line. The Golden Flashes are on the doorstep. Yeah, this is the type of down and distance that you want. Opportunity to pick up the first down or obviously go in the end zone for the score. Alimo in the hurry up. Garcia gets hit. Maybe a yard loss there. They can get a first down. Well, one thing's clear, David, is that Central Connecticut has come to fight. They are not going out without battling. And I love what I'm seeing out of this defensive front so far and that they're not getting pushed around by a much bigger and more experienced offensive front for Kent State. Very warm Saturday afternoon here. Perfect for football. The winds are calm right now. Golden flashes. Looking at a third down and two from the four-yard line. A steady diet of Gavin Garcia, and he plows forward. Might have the first down. We'll see how they spot it. And very conservative play calling on the part of Kent State. With multiple runs up the middle as opposed to trying to pass that ball in the end zone. They'll hurry up again. Garcia bounces to the outside. He'll go in untouched. Touchdown, Kent State Golden Flashes, their first TD of the season, and how sweet that must feel for that offensive unit. That's right, David. You will always take touchdowns over field goals any opportunity that you get, and this is the first time that Kent State has scored a touchdown with two games played prior. But what you like about the drive is that it was methodical, and the offensive line was able to express itself with very physical run blocking featured in his drive. Andrew Glass for the PAT. Kicks it up and no questions asked. It, it is good, seven to nothing. Golden Flashes, they score on their first possession of the ball game. Now, Gavin Garcia of the Kent State Golden Flashes, he scored 130 touchdowns in his high school career at Southern Columbia High School in Pennsylvania. But uh, I think he might stack this one up against any of those previous 130. He'll certainly add this to his career total <laughs> all-purpose touchdowns, be it high school or college. But what you love about Double G, Gavin Garcia, is the fact that he runs with great pad level. And I am certain that he does not mind being the featured running back in this offense because out of those 12 plays, David, he had seven carries. 12 plays, 76 yards on the scoring drive, Gerard. I felt it was a very balanced attack by Kent State. It was, but also when you're 7 to 12, you, okay, you got five that go to the passing game, but I felt it was very conservative in his approach, so I'm pretty sure at some point Matt Johnson, offensive coordinator for Kent State, will air it out. The kickoff will sail Ooh. out of bounds. Not exactly what they were looking for on special teams, but Central Connecticut State will keep it now. The Blue Devils will come out with a new quarterback today. Ricky Ortega gets the start. He's a sophomore out of Coatesville, PA, filling in for C.J. Duell, who started the first two games of the season for the Blue Devils, but he is a medical scratch today. That he is, and I'm pretty sure Ricky Ortega, David, will take the promising field position. If you're Glass, the kicker for Kent State, you have to do a better job than that. Don't give this team any hope, that being Central Connecticut, put them in a position where they have to drive at least 75 yards to score a touchdown or put somewhere in field position for a field goal. Seven to nothing, golden flashes. First play of the game from scrimmage for the visitors. They keep it on the ground and go to their featured tailback. It's Elijah Howard he is quickly tackled by Oliver Blott, the defensive tackle, but to Howard, a transfer out of Virginia Tech where he was a defensive back Wants to play running back, and he's uh, now starring for Central Connecticut State. I think we may even have an, a third quarterback option as Matt Jenner gets the start, and he ran for it over the right side. Didn't get much. And they're looking now at a third down. Tackle by C.J. Harris, the outside linebacker. 
of Kent State. Flashes march down the field. They scored on their first possession. Yeah, the defense for the Kent State Golden Flashes is thinking three and out in this scenario. And if you're Central Connecticut, you don't want to be in this down and distance threshold, but you got to figure out a way to stay on the football field. Jenner fires the pass, broken up, nicely defended by the Golden Flashes. Knifing in there, Devin Nicholson. He's had a monster start to the season, Gerard. He breaks up that pass with a lunge. And Devin Nicholson shows you that he has a full skill set in that he can tackle an open field and he can also cover because that was a nice job of anticipating the throw and getting the pass break up. Jack Barnum will punt this from the 35-yard line. So Central Connecticut State unable to move the ball. Floria is the return man. Caught it at about the 29, gets wiped out at the 32. Kent State ball with a seven point lead after we come back from this timeout. Along with our producer, Mike Bacon, David Wilson, Gerard Cherry on duty here at Kent State's Dick Stadium. Flashes up seven to nothing. You get a look at some of the history between Kent State and FCS opponents. And it has been pretty one-sided. It certainly has been. And that last FCS loss, I actually called that game, David. And it was a sensational game that night as Kent State went down to North Carolina AT&T. But right now, things are looking very favorable for the Golden Flashes in that they defense forced a three-and-out situation. Now you have the offense right back on the football field trying to get some more productivity. Mike Alimo, he is a transfer out of Purdue, played very sparingly there for the Boilermakers. Now the starting quarterback at the outset of this 2023 season, Gavin Garcia, tough to bring down. They had to get to him in the secondary. It's tackled after a seven-yard pickup. And a key on any level, be it FCS or FBS, is that you have to bring your shoulder pads and your legs when you're tackling a real gifted and strong running back. You can't just arm tackle and hope that he'll go down. Tackled by Harold Miles the third, tight end in motion. Garcia again running behind actually that might have been a different running back no it was Garcia so he gets a second straight carry on this drive miles again on the stop it'll leave Kent State at a third and very short well I hope Garcia got his carb load for the last couple of days because they are certainly featuring him in both these drives for Kent State flashes have struggled on third down 11 of 29 in their first two games and uh, some nice footwork there. Gets him a first down at the 45-yard line. Kent State with a starting offensive line of Cam Golden at right tackle, Chris Farrell at right guard, Andrew Page the center, Dustin Morell at left guard, and Jim To Odebegwu at the left tackle. Running right. Garcia out near midfield and you just get the feeling Gerard and you referred to this just a moment ago that maybe they are setting things up for a shot downfield certainly setting things up for a shot downfield but also trying to wear out the defensive front for Central Connecticut in that you have bigger bodies on the Kent State offensive line in which they're saying okay we're gonna beat you guys up for a few quarters and then express ourselves in that second half but I also think too right now is taking place is that you have the head coach Kenny Burns who's a former running back who's probably saying, keep running the football. They do throw it that time. Hayden Junker, the tight end, made the catch, got knocked out of bounds right in front of Kenny Burns. Jaden Anderson made the stop. Third down and one after the catch by Junker, his second catch of the year. And Central Connect is trying to get his first win over FBS opponent, and they're gonna have to put up a better fight than what they're doing right now in order to accomplish that goal. Flash is trying to win their seventh home opener in a row. And again, Garcia, he just uh, has that nimble. Actually, that was Williams that time. Sort of got through with some nifty footwork and is tackled at the 40. That's good for a first down. Xavier Williams, a grad student out of Forestville, Maryland, missed all of last year after uh, being injured in the 2021 MAC championship game. So you have to respect the young man's uh, perseverance to come back and, and finish out his grad year here at the Golden Flashes. Exactly. Fight through injury and 
just what it takes to get the recovery process in full gear and in motion. It's not an easy obstacle to overcome, and for him to show the wherewithal to overcome that and then be back on the football field playing for Kent State is something that you certainly admire and you appreciate, obviously, if your coach Burns is having his presence on the football field because you always are looking for veteran leadership. I don't care what level it is. You saw Kamal Clark. He was the uh, injured player hurting. Adam Lechtenberg, first-year head coach of the uh, Blue Devils of Central Connecticut State. Adam, a former assistant at a number of stops, including Central Oklahoma, Virginia Tech, UT Martin, Memphis. And more importantly, Central yep. Connecticut. won <laughs> it. NEC Conference Championship. Alimo handing it off. Right along the 40-yard line, running laterally. Just handed off to Krishan McCray, the wide receiver on a little sweep there. That went nowhere. Second down coming up. Tackled by Trinidad Gonzalez. And very conservative play calling so far on the part of Matt Johnson, the offensive coordinator for Kent State, in that they're not going vertical, but I anticipate it's going to happen pretty soon. Maybe right here, Gerard. Sideline route, and it is caught. Alimo drops it right into the breadbasket of Trell Harris for a Kent State touchdown. 40 yards. <laughs> the classic example of lure you to sleep, lure you to sleep, and then boom, we hit you with a big burgle passing play in which you have the fade route run by Trell Harris, who we featured in the open as a guy we have to look out for, and he gives you right there reasons why. Alimo's first touchdown pass as a golden flash. And it's 13 to nothing, Kent State. 5.21 to go in quarter number one as they set up for the one point convert. Andrew Glass out of the hold of Josh Smith. Some movement there on the line. Flags fly. Catch the Billy Williams uh, announcement. I think it was against Central Connecticut State. Offside. Defense, number zero, with contact. The Phillies decline. We'll reset the track. Offside. Defense, number zero, with contact. So they decline the penalty. They'll get the kick away in just a moment, trying to add on the point after the Trell Harris touchdown reception. There is the kick. It is up. It is perfect. And Kent State up 14 to nothing here. 5.21 to go in quarter number one. We'll see it again right here, Gerard. 